When you think about the human uses of birds, the most typical answer would probably be for consumption. Meat would be the most obvious answer. Humans even eat ravens and songbirds meat after all. After meat, eggs would be the next obvious answer. Chicken egg is obvious, but we also consume relatively niche eggs like quail eggs or, you know, even ostrich eggs. Balut is also a thing, which is basically a combination of both meat and egg when you think about it. Other economically important thing would be their feather. In niche cases, birds can help in some human activities, like raptor birds being used for falconry, pigeon paws, or even ostrich racing. Oh, I almost forgot. Birds are also popular as pets, especially parrots. But for the topic of this video, those things that I mentioned does not even apply to them. The oil bird is being used for oil. But how could that be? Well, let me bring up the question. What exactly is oil bird? First of all, just to make it absolutely obvious, yes, oil bird is indeed an actual bird. Oil bird is closely related to the night jars. In fact, Oil bird was once classified in the night jars order, Caprimulgiformes, but it was moved to its own exclusive order, Steatorniteiformes. There is only one family in this order, which is Steatornitidae, with only one extant genus and one extant species, Steatornis caripensis. Steatornis means fat bird, and caripensis means from Caripe, which is a city in Venezuela. So, their scientific name basically translates to fat bird from Caripe, which is quite something. Although they are called that way, they are not exclusive to the Caripe though. They are distributed in specific areas of northern South America, to be precise, in caves adjacent to forests. Why their distribution is so limited has something to do with their lifestyle. Well, to be fair, it has everything to do with it. I'll talk about that later. Before that, Let's talk about their morphology first. Oil birds look relatively stocky, while not exactly being a big bird themselves. They are typically around 40 to 50 centimeters, with a wingspan of 90 to 100 centimeters. They have a lot in common with the night jars. They have short legs, rictal bristles, and soft feathers. However, compared to night jars, their feathers are not as soft. Compared to night jars, their beak is relatively long, flattened, and strongly hooked. They also don't have peculiar accessories that many night jars have. To put it simply, they look quite normal compared to other night jars. Their wings are more slotted than many night jars, which typically have narrow and sharp wings. Their eyes are relatively small, but they have large pupils. Their feathers are mostly brown to cinnamon, with hints of white spots. Oh, by the way, their scientific name means fat bird because their cheeks are fat. Their cheeks are heavier than their adult, which is quite something. And yeah, besides the fact that their cheeks are fat, there's not much interesting thing going on with their morphology. Their uniqueness comes from their lifestyle, so let's talk about that. But before that... Night jars have soft feathers and sharp wings because they are hunters. The soft feathers enable them to be silent, while the sharp wings enable them to be swift. They are nocturnal, but they only rely on their vision, hence they have good eyes. Basically, night jars are typically nocturnal silent hunter. However, that's not the case for oil bird. Oil birds are still nocturnal. However, they are herbivores, frugivores to be precise. They strictly eat fruits. Fun fact. Oil bird is the only nocturnal frugivore flying bird that we are aware of. Just to be clear, flying bird. Because there is another nocturnal frugivore bird, which is the kakapo from New Zealand. Oil birds take the night jar size into a whole new level. Their retinas have 1 million rod shells per millimeter square, which is more than any other vertebrate that we know of. In terms of structure, their eyes are quite similar to deep sea fishes which are very adapted to low light condition. They roost inside caves, and they stay there throughout the day. So basically, their entire living condition is low light. Hence, their eyes are specialized for low light condition. It doesn't stop here. 
They also exhibit echolocation by clicking their beak. Even the night jars, which are active hunters, don't exhibit echolocation. The only other birds that exhibit echolocation are some swifts. And yeah, combined together, those traits make the oil bird truly unique among birds. You could even argue they are truly unique among vertebrates. Now, let's stop glazing them and talk about their lifestyle. Oil birds live colonially with thousands or even 10,000 individuals roosting together in their cave. If no cave is available, they can stay in canyons and grottoes. At night, they exit their roosting ground to forage for food. They can travel more than 20 kilometers to seek for food. They typically eat fruit pulps of Lauraceae, especially avocado and laurel family, but also eat palm fruits and torchwood fruits. Those have distinct smell, and oil birds also have well-developed olfactory organs. They will move to another hunting spot when food becomes scarce. They could even travel more than 100 km to search for new hunting spot. They form monogamous pair, which is why they are mostly found in pair even in their colony. Nests are built from seeds, fibers, and their excrements. They breed once a year, typically around April to May during the rainy season. They lay two to four white eggs, and both parents will tend their eggs. Eggs hatch after around a month. Chicks are fed with the same food as the adults, and Lauraceae fruits are known to contain a lot of fat, hence their chicks become fat. It takes around 3 to 4 months before they become independent. Even though the scientific community knows about them since 200 years ago, we don't exactly know how long is their lifespan. In terms of importance, our view on them have shifted quite significantly, so let's talk about it. In the past, the chicks of oil birds were harvested to produce oil. They were boiled down to render the fat. The oils produced by the process were then used for lighting and various needs such as cooking. However, we don't do that anymore because, well, we simply don't need to. There are tons of oil sources available. And let's just be real. Boiling oil bird chicks to produce oil doesn't really sound nice, isn't it? Some people might even question the ethic of that practice. So yeah, protection towards oil birds had been issued by governments, and locals stopped doing that. However, even to this day, oil birds still have a notable economic importance. Oil birds' colonies become one of the tourist attractions in countries that host them. In Caripe, Venezuela, there is a national park called Cueva del Guacaro, which basically means Guacaro Cave. And guacaro is one of the local names for oil bird. Oil birds themselves are considered least concerned, but this national park also hosts some endangered birds, which is good for them of course. Oil birds are also one of the most significant seed dispersers in their habitat because they can travel over 100 kilometers and they will regurgitate seeds while taking a short break by roosting in canopies. Still, because they are not exactly a migratory bird, and because they are strictly frugivores, deforestations can be devastating for them. But yeah, that is oil bird. Not only do they have an interesting usage history, they themselves are biologically pretty unique. Who knows, maybe we'll learn more about them. Maybe some fossil records to learn about their evolution. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, I thought oil bird is a pretty iconic bird, but in reality, many people don't even know about their existence. I wonder, have you heard about them before watching this video? But anyway, enjoy your day.